In this video, we'll be seeing how to write a function to convolute an image using a kernel. So there are inbuilt functions in Python and other uh, modules or packages which allow you to do convolution, but we'll be writing code uh, which allows us to do so. So first of all, we'll write the def convolute function and we'll pass it an image or an array which, we, which needs to be convoluted. Then we'll pass the kernel size. So kernel size can be three by three or five by five. So uh, we need to pass one, either three or five. And then the filter. So the filter will be defined and it will be passed. And the stride. So stride is either one, two, three, or it can be any number. So in the function, first of all, we'll need to see the rows and the column size of the array or the image which has been passed. And then we need to flip the kernel. So in convolution, we need to flip the kernels which has been passed. So we'll use the transpose function onto the filter that is the kernel which has been passed here. So filter.transpose is the flipped kernel. Now we need to create an output image. So first of all, we'll define the dimensions. So m convoluted and convoluted the rows is equal to math.floor m minus kernel size plus stride divide by stride. So this function, this uh, function of floor is available from the math library and this can be imported from the import math function. If you don't have it, you can go to file settings in the Python interpreter You can add plus and you can search for math and then add it. Since I already have it, we'll move forward with the code. So as you can see, I've used the function math.floor and then uh, using the m minus kernel size plus stride divide by stride. This defines the size of the new array which we can get. So now we have our size. So we'll first of all define a zero array. That is an array filled of value zero of the size mconf and nconf. Now we need to update the values in the output file, output uh, array. So we'll run a for loop. So for i in the range of rows, for j in the range of columns, we'll first of all, we'll say the sum of elements is zero. Since any convolution operation involves addition of all the values from the neighboring pixels, it can be weighted or non-weighted. So we'll initialize the value to zero. Now, initially, we iterated in the range of the new array. Now, we are going to iterate in the range of the kernel. So, we need to have four loops in our iteration for a convolution operation. So, for O in kernel rows, for P in kernel columns, we'll define another variable S is equal to, now we'll multiply the values of the kernel that is the starting point of the kernel with the starting point of your image or the array which you have passed now this is a bitwise operation and the bitwise operation returns a value now after this value is returned the sum of elements that we defined here can be updated with this value you can also write it as sum of elements is equal to sum of elements plus s this is a shorter version or the short form to write it now after this has been completed we will update the ith row and the jth column with the value of sum of elements so after the convoluted array has been updated we can print a shape of the array and then we can write a statement using the uh, the i am show function of the plotlib and then to see what is the output of our operation. Then we'll define a Gaussian blur, which is equal to np.array. And this is the standard format of a Gaussian kernel or the Gaussian blur. And then we'll call the function using conv image is equal to convolute. And then here we need to see that the i which we have loaded, it is a three channel image that is the r, g and b. So we have to pass all the rows, all the columns, and only the zeroth channel that is the red channel and then we'll try and run this function and as you can see that this is the convoluted array which we have been returned 
and if you compare it with the original image you can see there is more blurring in this image as compared to the original one.